If you're looking to track some kind of attendance in Airtable, you don't want to miss this video. We're going to be going into detail not only about how you might use a template, but more importantly, how you can frame your thinking for any kind of class or attendance that you need to organize. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help people to organize and automate their businesses and lives. If that's of interest and you want to see exactly how we do that, swing by our website and check out all the resources we've put together just for you. But without further ado, let's just jump into this particular project. For whatever reason, this has been coming up in my inbox a lot over the last month. People saying, hey, I run some sort of a school and I need to track attendance for the different classes that I run. Can you help? This is how I would think about structuring that in Airtable. Now, there are a ton of variations, of course, that you can make to this. That's what makes Airtable so cool. So if the scenario that I describe here doesn't pertain to your business or your life, make changes and, you know, Airtable's a box of Legos. Build what you need. Anyhow, this structure that we have here includes four main categories. The first one is students. Then we have purchases made by those students. Then we're tracking classes, as in, you know, we have different offerings, different things that we teach. And then we have a calendar where we, you know, look at all of that. So let's go into, you know, high level on each of these. So starting with students, we have student related data, right? The first name and the last name, the email, phone number, all of that good stuff. Now you'll see that we have a link to purchases, right? Because a student can make a purchase, more than one purchase, we hope, if we're, you know, providing a great service. And then also, you know, they can schedule time or rather they schedule their classes on that calendar and so we have a link both to purchases and to calendar from the student now from that we can derive some other stuff like how many sessions have they paid for based on the number of purchases they've made and also how many sessions have they attended based on the number of attended sessions and so from there we can derive some sort of status in this case i built a three um basically a three output formula Case one, we say, hey, if the total paid sessions are zero, that means they've never bought from us before, then they're a prospective student, right? They, they, they're not a student yet. Now, on the other hand, if that's not met, but instead, if the total paid sessions is equal or are equal to the number of sessions they've attended, then they're a previous student. Let's say they bought eight and then they attended eight, they're a previous student. The other solution, or the other option, I should say, is that if total sessions, total paid sessions is greater than the number of sessions attended, then we automatically know that they're a current student. They've paid for stuff that they haven't yet received. They're still in classes with us. So that is the scenario that we built here, and we'll test this out and make sure that it's working appropriately a little bit uh, in, in just a little bit. Now let's take a look at purchases. Pretty straightforward here. All we're tracking is who's the student that made the purchase, what's the date of the purchase, and how many sessions did they purchase. So for our example, we're imagining that you know we have uh, uh, this flexibility where we say, hey, here's our here are the classes that we offer. You can come in and attend any number of sessions. Maybe we're teaching yoga. Maybe you know this is some sort of like gym. Um, you know maybe we're teaching a specific skill or trade. It's you know really flexible. The point is that they can buy any number of sessions. And so one other thing that we might record here is the amount of that payment, because maybe we have uh, the, the ability to pull this data in through some sort of automation. And this is one of those more advanced things that you might do for this database if you are using it for yourself, but recording your transactions automatically, maybe through your accounting software or through some sort of payment portal, uh, depending on how you're receiving those payments. So taking a look at the next set of data, we're looking at classes, and these are the different things that we offer. So maybe, for example, we have Intro to Airtable, <laughs> Intermediate Airtable, and Advanced. So each of these classes might be offered at different times, might start on different dates, maybe they run certain days of the week, depending on how you structure your business. So this is where you're gonna categorize all of that information. And then your classes are gonna also link to your calendar, and this is kind of where the magic all comes together. Because in the calendar, we have three, the intersection of three different variables that make each one of these data points very unique. So the first of those variables is the session data itself. So, or excuse me, the session date. What is the day that this thing occurred? Then the second thing is the student, right? And you see that we have the link to the students right here. And the third thing is the class. 
And so this is where we're saying, hey, this is what we're teaching on that particular session. So maybe this person, you know, scheduled intro to Airtable, whereas this session here obviously is intermediate Airtable. So then we have a formula that kind of combines these data points and produces some sort of an output for each session. Now, before I go into much more detail on this, let me just pause and say, a lot of times when people want to track this student attendance stuff, they kind of think of it at the student level. They want to track attendance on a student level, so they build a checkbox here. But that does not give you the ability to track that attendance over time and you don't you lose out on the ability to archive all those previously attended you know scenarios so building the calendar vertically like this is what I would recommend for that very reason right here we can see that this same student attended or rather scheduled six different sessions they attended these two these three are in the future as of the recording of this video it's February 6th so we would not expect to see any attendance here, but we can clearly see that they missed this. Now we also here are imagining that we've got a certain number of desks, one through six, and I've color coded these so that we can kind of spruce up our calendar, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Before we go and look at the calendar though, the point here is we are marking attendance at each record level. So for a particular day, for a particular student, for a particular class, did they attend? And if we check that off, then the session status should update. So we have a pretty complicated formula here. Again, it's a nested if statement. So there are a lot of different conditions. And essentially what we want to evaluate are these variables. If the session date is in the past and they attended it, then let's say this was the date and this was the person who attended. If the session date was in the past, but they did not attend, then they should have been labeled as absent, right? On the other hand, if the session date is in the future, like this one, and they have not attended, well then of course we know it's a future session, right? And if the uh, session date is in the future and for some reason they have attended, well then we have an error, right? So we basically wrote a formula here and we'll take a look at it, uh, sorry, here. And it's just a nested if statement and it just goes through all those different scenarios and I'll go ahead and include this in the description of this video so that you guys can just copy that and take a look at it for yourselves but that's the gist of what we're trying to do here right we're just saying hey look we want to mark attendance for a student and a class and a date at this granular level and so that's why we've built these this dual linked scenario now for your planning purposes and a lot of a lot of the uh, folks who've been reaching out need to plan some sort of you know, situation with their students. Maybe they only have six desks like in our scenario. So bringing in that color coding for those, for those desks is really helpful here. And we do that by simply first creating a calendar. And so here we can see all the students for a particular day. Let's drop in and we can look at all the students on this. I've, I've switched this to the weekly view. So we get you know, a zoomed in view. And we would see all the different students on, you know, broken out for a session here. Now, the nice thing with this color is it's taking the color of the desk. And so in this case, if we flip back into that grid view, I've got different colors for all these desks and it's color coding that calendar. It makes it really easy for us to see from a high level, you know, if we've double booked a desk or something like that. So that's the overall layout here. Let's go into how we might put this to use. So I've got a bunch of students in here. These are all prospective students, again, because they haven't paid for any sessions. Let's go ahead and make some fake purchases. So I'm gonna make 1,003 here, and this will be for Lincoln. If Airtable will catch up, let's see. There we go. And let's say he buys five sessions here. And I can do another fake purchase here, and this one will be for, uh, whoops. This one will be for, uh, let's go with Truman. Let's say Truman purchases 10 sessions. So we go back over here and we would expect to see that Truman and Lincoln now have paid sessions, which also means that they're current students. Cool. So now let's talk about putting them on the calendar. Maybe, uh, you know, we've got these folks. Let's go ahead and get Lincoln in here. So we'll bring Lincoln in and we'll just assign him some random dates here. There we go. So let's suppose that Lincoln want, uh, wanted to attend an intermediate air table on these four days and he did in fact attend. So we would mark that attendance here. 
Now we would also be able to see the desk. Maybe he's very particular and only uses desk two. Um, now, when we flip back into our calendar view, we're going to see that blue coming through for him here. Now, if we had some error over here, let's say that we had scheduled Lincoln on desk one, you know, when we flip into that calendar view, we can see that we have two people, same color on the same day or for the same class, and this is gonna make a problem for us. So again, it gives us that high level ability to say, uh-oh, something's off, right? But more importantly now, when we flip back into students, we can track how many of these he's attended. And if we were to go ahead and assign him one more class, let's go back into our grid view on the calendar and we'll go ahead and copy this down. And let's suppose, you know, he had a, attended a class on the 1st of February as well. Well, now he has attended five classes. So we can go back into the calendar and, or excuse me, not the calendar, the students, and we're gonna see that he was a previous student, right? Because he's already finished this, he's attended all five of the sessions that he's paid for. You can build a lot of different logical scenarios into your particular, uh, you know, setup for this and make it more flexible to your particular needs. Anyhow, this is just the high level approach that we take to these types of problems. If you'd like to learn more, definitely check out all the different things that we've put available for you on our site and consider joining our upcoming membership group as well. If you're not on our email list, you'll wanna jump in there to learn about that as soon as it becomes available. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.